Alright guys, welcome back to another video. What a good place to start the video. Yeah, it's about nine in the morning. Been awake since half six. We wanted to see how far we could get today. Because uh, we still haven't completed the bottom section of the trail. My back end is all over the place. But yeah guys, we decided to start in Kent today because we've done the other section so many times. And yeah, we've been riding since 7. And... Thank you. And yeah guys, see you on our next trail. Thank you. Alright guys, back on the trails. This is treacherous. It's a lot steeper than it looks. And because it's been raining for two days, it's honestly quite disgusting. Oh my, that is soft. Yeah, all that chalk's been washed into... Washed into each other and been turned into chalk, apparently. I'm glad I'm out of that part. Oy. Absolutely terrifies me going downhill. Especially that one. That one is so steep. Like me in Fast and Furious or something. This is so tight. It's like on the head. Ooh. I don't know why I close my eyes as if I'm going to get slapped in the face. I need hand guards so bad. Oh my head. Yeah, I need hand guards so bad. I keep taking my hands off the bars because there's like a twig about to slap them. And as you guys know, taking your hands off the bars is not the smartest idea. I mean, it's pretty stupid, honestly, but it's either that or I break my fingers. So, Brimstone Lane, bit of wheel spin there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're in Brimstone Lane. Pretty sure it's the smallest trail. It's a bit slippery. As I said earlier, it's rained for two days. So, it's a bit washed out. The chalk's the worst right now, and the gravel seems to get thinner when it rains, which is different. I'm still working on my cornering, by the way. Like, I can't corner too fast. I don't know if it's because i got these rubbish MT60s on my bike still. But we will get there. It's all a process. Pass some llamas. No access for vans. Good job we're not on a van. Oh, it's slippery. Wet leaves, wet leaves. Freshly trimmed by the looks of it. Oh yeah. I really need new tyres, man. New tyres and some uh, hand guards. It'd be completely different. Nearly dropped there. The tree down. Sliding all over the place. <laughs> the trails. That was a long road ride. But yeah, one of the topics I wanted to talk about today is. Do I think the Himalayan is a good beginner bike for off-roading? And my answer is yes. 
And I say that because you can sit down pretty much for everything. Um, I don't suggest it for like the bumpy parts, but you can sit down and paddle your way through like whatever you want, like I am now. <laughs> um, like for me, I'm a complete beginner. I've never been off-road. I've rode the CRF and I don't think it doesn't make you feel as confident. Like it feels capable, very capable, but it doesn't make you feel as confident. Whereas on this, if I stack knobblies on this, I can pretty much do whatever I want. Um, but yeah, it inspires confidence in you, honestly. It's, it's a great bike for it. It's capable, it's very capable. Obviously not as capable as a, a fully bred dirt bike, but if you do a bit of road riding as well, you know, like you like to adventure and tour and stuff, the Hemi's a real good bike. Especially the, the power, it's not going to get away from you. Like, you can full throttle up hills and you won't feel overpowered. The only problem you'll have is ground clearance, really. It's the only issue I've had so far. And if you're new to biking as well, doing your own maintenance, if that's something you're interested in, it's pretty easy on this bike. But yeah, guys. Boy. Cheers, man. Thank you. But yeah, it's a good bike if you're a beginner. Even for just those reasons, I think it's enough to pick it up. I can't really see any issues you'd have other than ground clearance. Parts are cheap, so if you do drop it and break a piece, you're not going to be breaking the bank. And it's also good if you want to tour, travel. You know, it comes with the rack, it comes with the uh, fuel tank protection. So, like out of the box, it's probably one of the best bikes for traveling. Which is what I'm doing mostly. I'm not doing any hardcore off-road, I'm not going fast. Oh, that's a big divot. Yeah guys, I'll get back to you on the next travel.